Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the channel for another South by Southwest 2022 interview. I am so happy to welcome Maria Bakalova to the channel, who is celebrating not one, but two South by Southwest movies this year. Hello. Congratulations. Hello. Thank you so much. Before we get to the movie specifically, I obviously have award season on the brain right now and wanted to look back a little to pave our way to these newest projects. So I imagine there's probably a million answers to this question I'm about to ask you, but what were some of your biggest takeaways from the Oscar experience? Because I always love asking people what Oscars mean to them just because, I don't know, sometimes we could kind of like lose the meaning of what we're fighting for and celebrating that entire experience. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. And yes, we're right in the race of the new year of the Oscars and it's so exciting to see it, especially having the chance to be a part of it last year. It's been just like a dream because being Eastern European, being Bulgarian, being from the other side of the world seems impossible, feels impossible to be a part of something that global and being seen and being heard. Um, so it still feels like a dream that last year happened and I'm just thrilled that people heard about places like Bulgaria, places like um, Moldova, Ukraine, Serbia, Macedonia. Um, this is my country, this is my region of the world and I'm proud to be Bulgarian, I'm proud to be Eastern European. So maybe that's one of the biggest takeaways which I felt and experienced that so many people from my region of the world reached out to me saying that their hopes has never been stronger and their dreams has never been bigger, that things are possible and we just have to dream big and dare to achieve our dreams. And if we do it, maybe we will. I love that so much. All right. So you go through that whole experience. You want to celebrate your wonderful achievement, but being in the award season race puts all that pressure on you because you want to celebrate what you accomplished, but it's also an opportunity to look forward and use that platform to, you know, line up things for the future. So as that award season run was winding down, what are some of your top priorities and goals so that in the future you can get the projects that speak to you most? Well, first of all, I will forever be grateful to uh, Sasha Baron Cohen and the whole team of Borat, um, people behind the camera, people in front of the camera, everybody that was extremely dedicated to make this movie, for giving me the chance to be working with them uh, and opening the door of the Western cinema to an Eastern European actor. Uh, so my dream and goal is to create more opportunities, again, for people from my region of the world, artists like Mina and Vesila, my director is from Women Do Cry that I'm here right now with. Uh, and just make this exchange that has been happening before, I think in the 90, in the 20s. And then something happened, I think the Cold War, World War II, where the bridge between the Western cinema and Eastern European actors have been broken completely. So I think it's time for us to reunite again and stand up for each other and create more projects that embrace different countries, embrace different nations, especially in the rise of this craziness that is happening right now in this place in Eastern Europe. Uh, it's crucial for us as artists to to be seen as, as human beings because I'm a little bit scared and cautious about how to say generalization of, for example, people from Russia uh, being considered even more as the bad people, the evil people, just because of the government that is making the decisions for them. Uh, so that's why my goals are to just try to portray people from my region of the world in the Western cinema, because the exchange and the collaboration that we can create is crucial for us, for just the state of art, the sake of art. Um, and yeah, maybe that's my biggest takeaway. If I can use my platform to speak for all these artists all around the world that haven't been heard and seen before. That's the biggest gift. Well, you're certainly doing that right now. With uh, with Women Do Cry, it's on a festival run right now, so that means our audience likely won't know much about it. So would you mind giving everyone a brief description of what Women Do Cry is about? So Women Do Cry, we started working on the project back in 2019, maybe even 2018. 
it was very, very long ago, very much long ago. Uh, and the whole process of working was from a complete secret because I went to an audition, which was a blind audition. And it was like, you just have to improvise something. Imagine that this and that and this and that and this and that is happening. And I was like, oh my God, that sounds exciting. That was before Borat. So at the beginning, I had no idea what is it going to be about. Then when I finally joined the project, I read the script, the original script that has been written by our writer and actress, Bilana Kazakova. Um, and I was absolutely inspired to work on it because the, the story of the movie uh, follows a family of women, five women, three sisters and two sisters that are daughters from four daughters of the older sister um which every each of them goes through a difficult time in their life and they get reunited because no matter how much they fight each other and i think we all can relay on that because somehow we're even way more honest and direct with our family people that we know are going to love us and we love um we can see in women to cry this so dreamed uh women female solidarity which is crucial because we always hear about men men are so solidar to each other but we can see that women will stand up for each other and at the end they're going to hold your hand and they're going to go through the darkness with you searching for the light and yeah it's a very powerful story about female rights against women abuse against physical or mental violence which unfortunately still exists and i'm i don't know a little bit scared that we we keep talking about that it's 21st century and places all around the world have seen and experienced women being subjugated still i i don't even know why is this keep happening so that's the fight of the movie from my point of view that we just want to be seen we just want to be heard we just want to have as much as we want to have kids, we want to have careers as well. And one of them should not accept the other part because why should you be described only as a housewife when you can have a baby and you can have a career, you should not be just, I don't know, if you want to, yes, go for it. But you should not be described by the patriarchy world, the society that you're worthless in a way. So that's the fight of the movie. And it's very challenging because the way that we worked was leading in a way of extremeness. And I can pretty much compare it to a theatrical play because, you know, the eye of the camera is very sensitive, but our filmmakers were guiding us in a direction that we just have to do it. We just have to be brave. We just have to dare to go bigger and stronger and more extreme because we didn't know where the end point is and that's the beauty of working on something like that it's scary though but it's cool i feel like powerful is an understatement in describing this movie it's like i could sit there and describe it to people all day long like you will not feel the full force of this movie until you see it for yourself and your performance is something else i wanted to go back to the idea of a blind audition so you do a blind audition for this and then when you get the script and you read what your character is struggling through and the types of scenes you'll have to do, like, is there any hesitation at that point? Like, I, I don't know if I'm ready for this. This seems like a lot. Well, it is a very unique process because, I don't know, it's just probably my luck <laughs> in my life when I'm always going with these blind auditions and I'm ending up in some craziness. Um, but when I read the script, when I saw the story, when I felt the story that we're talking about 18 years old, 19 years old girl. And it's based pretty much on real events that have happened around people that we know, friends, relatives, um, that are still hurt by other people's behavior based on the things that are happening in their life. Um, I was thrilled and I was extremely moved and I wanted to, to be a part of it. And I wanted to, I, I wanted to take care of this girl and I wanted to hold her hand and fight all of the people that have made her feel in a certain way. Um, it was scary because you're going to something that so many people are afraid to talk about problems that people are ashamed of in a way, which again, for me, it's ridiculous, but it was scary. It was definitely scary. I, I was afraid. Will I actually 
go there? If I go there, how dangerous will be? Can I come back? Because <laughs> with all this method acting thing uh, and we, with all the scenes, locations that we showed, people that we worked with, some of them are like real doctors, some of them are real people from the village that she's going. Everybody basically respond to their character in a way. So for me, it was challenging to, to do it, but we worked for a long time on the script, on table, and I did a lot of research. What is it like to, to live with the diagnosis of HIV positivity in 21st century, 2020, for God's sake, and how still people all around the world are somehow afraid to talk about it without even knowing that with one pill, you actually can have a full life. You can still have babies. You can still have a career. You can still have a fulfilled life. And it's something that people should know because if you know it, you're not going to be that scared and you should not be described by society and in a way of like, oh my God, is she going to die? No, she's not. And we have to support people um, no matter what is what are they going through but it was scary it was definitely scary and exciting and i mean my fullest my biggest inspiration my whole life has been danish cinema and the movement dogma 95 created by lars von trier and thomas winkenberg so being a part of something that kind of remind me of that has been the dream completely I love hearing that. All right. We do have one more movie to briefly touch on now. It's Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. I feel like post-Borat, you couldn't have chosen like any other like more different movies to jump into from that. So first with that <laughs> one, are you a big horror genre fan in general? Is that something that's always appealed to you? Well, you know, the scariest part is that I'm actually scared to watch horror movies, but there's something very, how to say it? very addictive in a 24 horror movies because they're always so visually beautiful and it's like oh my god that's a piece of piece of art and you just want to look at it and it's just wow mind-blowing with hereditary and midsummer and so many others that's just the first two that are coming to my mind and reading the script in one breath being excited to see what is it gonna happen at the end for god's sake uh i was like I'm dying to be a part of this. Having A24 as a distributor, as a production company, as everything, I was like, I'm absolutely excited to join the process. And to work with Helena Rain, who is an incredible female filmmaker. She's also European. Uh, she is Dutch. And her sensitivity, her movie, previous movie, went to Lucarno and win uh, the Grand Prix called Instinct. I was beyond excited and thrilled and flattered to be to be a part of something that she creates because the movie speaks a lot to me. Her movie, previous one, Instinct, the relationship between a mother and a daughter and being a woman and meeting, I mean, I'm not gonna give spoilers because the movie is just incredible and you, if you haven't seen it, you just have to see it. Um, so that's why I was extremely excited. I was scared to be a part of a horror movie because I'm scared of horrors, but A24 horror movies are something different. Plus I think at the end, Bodies, Bodies, Bodies feels more like an R-rated comedy because everybody brought their funniness in a way. We were, The whole cast was incredible. I mean, these are all people that I'm dying to work over and over and over and over again with. Amanda Stenberg, Mahala Herold, Rachel Sinod, uh, Chase Who Wonders, Pete Davidson, Lee Pace. They were just so incredible. And it's been beyond exciting. So I'm... I'm counting the, the minutes, the hours for the movie to be out and seen and heard about it because it's it's cool. It's fresh, it's unique, it's funny. And yeah, I'm, I'm super excited. It's super excited. I'll throw in one more question about that one before we have to wrap up here. So you just name dropped a whole bunch of wonderful co-stars there. Is there anything you saw anyone do while you were on set making that movie that you put in your back pocket and said to yourself, I want to try that on my next movie because I really admire it? Wow. Uh, wow. I love this question. Um, it was actually super interesting for me because I'm coming from a theatrical training, 10 years of theater, drama theater from Brecht to Chekhov to, I don't know, Strindberg and um, Vachtangov and every different kind of 
theatrical training that you can imagine. Uh, but being in movies and in movie education, we don't really have that. So meeting people that are young and that are coming also from, most of them from theatrical training as well, some of them comedians, was interesting as a workshop for me because I remember we were talking and somebody was telling me that before every single scene, before every single work day, they they create a playlist that responds only to the character, for example. Or somebody else was telling me something that she always, um, what is it called? Changing completely her closet and taking new clothes for that she's, it's somehow outside inside work of art, which I haven't done before, but it's something that I started doing, like creating a playlist completely for this character and trying to imagine that I'm living this life now. So there are a lot of interesting things, how to clean yourself after a day of work. And especially when you're working on a horror set, <laughs> you need that. <laughs> Well, I have to let you go. I feel like I could talk to you all day. I have a million more questions I'd love to ask. Uh, huge congratulations on Women so Do excited. Cry. Women Do Cry is phenomenal, and I have all the faith in the world and bodies, bodies, bodies. So big congratulations and enjoy South by Southwest. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's been a pleasure.